Hey onlineers, this lab is lab number 10, friction. So, let me show you what I set up. You got your friction pad, and I got the uh, block with the two hooks on it. Seems to be almost exactly 50 grams. If you're not sure, just uh, hang it with a piece of string from your spring scale and confirm that it is about 50 grams, okay? So it's 50 grams, should be about 49 newtons, okay? Now we're gonna hang that down and we're going to start putting masses on top of here. Friction is directly proportional to the normal force. That's what we're out to try to prove and we're looking for mu. Mu, according to that chapter that I know you read, is called the coefficient of friction and we're gonna find that with a graph, okay? Then we're going to compare it to another technique I have in the write-up on how to find mu a totally different way, which is really kind of cool. And we'll see how they compare. Expect your data to really be bad, but you'll still learn a bunch of stuff. Okay? So, first thing is, put some weight on there. So put some mass on there, I should say, so that the normal force is great enough where you can get a decent reading. And then pull this thing at a constant speed. And it's got to be parallel. You can't shoot it from up here or on the angle. Nice and parallel. Pull with a constant speed and read the reading on the spring scale while you're pulling it at a constant speed. Using that constant speed concept means there's no net force. If there's no net force, that means whatever you're pulling with is equal to friction because there's no acceleration. Get it? Okay? Now, you're going to do it again, the same idea. You're going to put some masses on here, pull with a constant speed. That's mu k. That'll give you the coefficient of kinetic friction. Constant speed. It's real important. The other coefficient is called coefficient of static coefficient, and that's what this going to read when it just breaks loose. You see, friction equals whatever this reads. Like if I pull with this, it's not moving. Friction must be equal to that force. But if I pull harder and it's not moving, friction now equals that force, a bigger force. But when does friction not only equal that, but also equal mu normal, the coefficient times the normal force. And the normal force, if we leave it flat, is equal to the weight. Normal force up, weight down, but they're equal because nobody's winning in the vertical. So when does mu normal equal friction? When this just breaks loose. When you just pull and it breaks loose. So you pull until it just breaks loose. 1 Newton, 1.1, 1.2, and then right about 1.5, it starts accelerating. So you record the force that just breaks it loose, record the force to move it at a constant speed, keep them separate because those forces, those tensions, happen to be equal to friction for the static and the kinetic version. Okay? Do that for all four surfaces with different weights. So I need a chart where maybe you put another hundred on every single time and get all the way up to hopefully a thousand. So put a hundred on every single time, record when it breaks loose, record at a constant speed. The constant speed one should be less than the one to just break it loose. Can you think of why that would be true where friction is less when you're moving than when you're trying to break loose? Think about that one, okay? So if I have 100 on there, it's 100 plus 50. So 150 total block plus mass is will be whatever that weighs, 150, uh, change it to kilograms, kilograms, multiply by 9.81, you get newtons. That would be the weight. And the weight on a horizontal surface happens to be equal to the normal force. And so if you know the normal force, you're gonna write that down, and then you're gonna write down when it just breaks loose and moving it at a constant speed. So moving it at a constant speed, write it down. When it just breaks loose, writing it down. 100 seem to be just now very, very, very tiny. So maybe you should start with 500 and work your way up to 1,000. Maybe that would be good. And then you'd have five good data points. Maybe 400 to 1,000. Five or six data points would be awesome. Do that for the cardboard. Do that for the cork, rubber, and the cork. It's not cork and sandpaper, last one sandpaper. Okay? All right, part two. Right, now we're going to find mu k and mu s in a totally different way. 
If you read the handout that I have and is an attachment to this info part, then you will know that there's some real special relationship between the angle that it started slipping at and mu. That if mu is greater, give it a little nudge in there, when mu is greater, the angle where it starts falling is greater. And the more the mu is, the steeper it can be before. So what angle is that? How do you find that out? Either use a protractor against the side or use a simple trig function. If you measure this, it's the hypotenuse. And then if you slide this up your ruler, you can measure the height directly until it tips over. And the minute it starts moving, stop. The minute it starts accelerating, that angle is what you want to record. So we record the angle for all four surfaces where it just breaks loose, but also record the angle where it slides down at a constant speed. That would be to give you mu k. To break loose gives you mu s, but mu k is an angle where it's sliding down at a constant speed. It's a little tricky when it all sticks like that. Let's try it on the cork so you can see it. There is a mu where it slides at a constant speed. It's hard to find because once this takes off, it accelerates. So sometimes you have to hold this here and just kind of let it slide down, give it a little push while it's sliding so that when it's on an angle, you give it a little shove and just keep going up until it starts sliding at a constant speed. Once it slides down at a constant speed, record that angle. Once you get the angle where it breaks loose and accelerates down, record that angle and compare those mu's by that technique in the handout to the mu's you got by using the equation and two graphs. The attached handout has four tables so that you can kind of eyeball your data to find out which one of the four you want to do those two graphs for. Remember you're going to do a graph for mu k and mu s for one of the four surfaces. I don't know which one will work best for you. Cork worked best for me, but look at your data. You could kind of take force of friction, which was the tension you pulled with, divided by the normal force, which is really the weight, and come up with, you know, a mu. Don't really do it. I don't want to see a bunch of mu's where you average. That's your graph. Graph is a better average than an average, but look and see which data you want to use for that. And when you pick the data, and you pick which material you want to do it for, go for it. Go with two graphs, one from US, one from UK, and then compare it to the tilting technique and tan theta to see whether or not you get close to the same mu. You might not, don't freak out, but give it a try. You'll learn a whole bunch of stuff about friction just by trying it. And, uh, you know, write me up a nice lab. It's all described for you in the handout. Thanks.